It is my great honor to present my daughter, Matilda, with the official Very Big Crown of the Empire. I am too old for this job, so she's the boss now. Got it? <laughs> What in tarnation? Why is everybody in their underwear? It's the new trend. They're all wearing magic clothes. Surely you can see their real clothing. All I see is a bunch of goofy people dancing around in their underwear. What? <gasps> the Emperor's new clothes! Wiggle, snap, story time! Once upon a time, there was an emperor. An emperor is basically the same as a king or a queen. A ruler, a head honcho, big kahuna, bad mamma jamma, the boss lady, you get the point. Anyway, this emperor's name was Matilda. Matilda was, how do I say, a bit much. What can I say? I like the finer things in life. Emperor Matilda spent a lot of her time thinking about stuff. Jewels, clothes, money. Sometimes she would open her palace to the public so that people could come in and admire all her things. Wow! Looky that! In case you were wondering, yes, it's real gold. Do you like that? Yes, your highness. Would you like to have it? Oh, yes, your highness, I would very much like that. Cool, just checking. All right, let's move it along. There's a long line here today. Yes, Emperor Matilda was a little out of touch with the people. All her life, everyone around her had just said, Yes, your highness, of course, your highness, what a pretty dress, your highness. No one deserves it more than you, your highness. You are the most wonderful person in the whole wide world in the history of humankind, your highness. And wow, we, could anyone be more perfect than you, your highness? I don't think so. No siree, Bob. No way, Jose. No contest. You kidding me? Come on. The best. The best. Yeah, it was all a bit much. The emperor was surrounded by people who only dared to say what they thought she wanted to hear. So it was kind of like she was living in a bubble. Like she was all by herself in her own world. So yeah, technically she pays us to hang out with her. And we have to call her your highness. But we like her. Yeah, she's only scary sometimes. Not scary like a shark or a big ogre. Ugh, where's my ice cream? Scary like that. Did you get Emperor Matilda her ice cream? I thought you were getting it. Excuse me. Hello. <gasps> ice cream, ice cream, ice cream for ice cream. Minnie, where's my ice cream? Sorry, your highness. I'll get it. No, I'll get it. I don't want to stay here if she's hangry. Be a dear and go get my ice cream. Yes, your highness, two scoops coming up. Two? Three, three scoops coming up. <laughs> it's melted. What? That's not possible. Yeah, look right there. <laughs> I'm not even that hungry anyway. Let's talk about my coronation. You might be wondering, what's a coronation? Well, a coronation is a royal ceremony where a queen or emperor gets her official I'm in charge crown. Matilda's father was old and it was time for her to take over. It was a pretty big deal. I don't get it. Don't you already have like a zillion crowns? Yes, but this makes it official. I'll finally be the supreme number one ruler of the empire. <gasps> and it's an excuse for a big party. <gasps> Speaking of, how's the party planning going? It's gonna be fabulous! Give me the deets. We're going to have acrobats, a ferris wheel, fireworks, ice sculptures, a taco truck, chocolate waterfall, a special performance by Shenyun dancers, the works! And what about the guest list? Everyone's gonna be there. I don't want everyone to be there. This needs to be exclusive. Right, right, well not everyone, but all the VIPs. Yep. All the princes and princesses, kings and queens, the movers and the shakers, the beautiful people, the glitterati, etc. Okay, sounds good. Now, the most important question, what am I going to wear? 
I was thinking your pink dress with the ruffles and beads. No. What about your other pink dress with ruffles and beads, but also has those diamond buttons? Hmm, nuh-uh. Purple one with puffy sleeves and hoop skirt? Nah. Your blue gown with rainbow glitter and rhinestones? Eh, I don't think so. Your red, white, and blue pantsuit? No. Nope. Yellow dress with fairy wings and little sparkly spangly bits hanging off of it? No, 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 no. I need a new outfit. Shall I book a carriage to the mall? Uh, I am not going to wear something off the rack for my coronation for a ride, eh? Ooh, how about we invite the world's leading fashion designers to the palace, and then we pick the one with the best design? Yes, and then I will pick which one has the best design. <laughs> Great idea. Glad I thought of it. Yes, wonderful idea, your highness. This is going to be so much fun. Bring on the fashion. This is going to be the best outfit ever. The best clothes anyone has ever seen. And so it was decided the world's best fashion designers would descend on the palace to vie for a chance to make the emperor's new clothes. The emperor needed the perfect new outfit for her coronation, so Friday and Jeeves called on the world's top fashion designers. They came from all over for a chance to make Emperor Matilda's coronation duds. One by one, they tried to convince the emperor to give them a chance. Presenting Nutella vs. Blotchy. Hello, I am Nutella vs. Blotchy, but you already knew that, didn't you, darlings? Yes, well, she literally just said your names. Oh, okay. Are you ready to have your mind blown? Yes. This year is going to be all about... Yeah. Wait for it. I'm waiting. Tiny hats. <laughs> Next. And now, meet Calvin Clown. Your Highness, I had a vision last night. I know exactly what you need to wear to your coronation. Ooh, tell me. Clown chic. <laughs> And here's Diane von Furstenberg. Hello, let me show you my designs made with exclusively the finest fox fur. Next. One by one, wacky designers came in to sell their ideas to Emperor Matilda. She was waiting to be wowed, dazzled, blown away, but so far she was not impressed. Oh, how hard is it to find someone who can make the most amazingly perfect and fabulous outfit the likes of which no one has ever seen? You know. Is she mad at us? I think she's mad at us. Do you think she's mad at us? Oh, I hope she's not mad at us. Uh, this is hopeless. Um, I think there might be one more designer out there. Zora, let's go check. Hi. Um, do you want to be a fashion designer by any chance? What? A fashion designer. Oh, never mind. Did somebody say fashion designer? We're not done. There's still hope. We've got... Wait, what are your names? I'm Z. Does that stand for something? It stands for everything and nothing. Okay, and your name? Dieter. Okay, your highness. May I present Z and Dieter? Hi. What's up? Um, people usually bow when they meet the emperor. Oh, do they? My bad. It's okay, Jeeves. They're cool, hip, artsy types. They're aloof. I can dig it. I'm cool. That's good to hear because our idea for your new look is very, very cool. I want something no one has ever seen before. Exactly. So, can I see a sketch or something? One moment. Do you trust us? I just met you. We can't show you our idea unless we know you trust our artistic vision. Okay. If not, we'll go design an outfit for Princess Megan. She gets us. No, wait. Uh, what do you need from me? One million gold coins. Yeesh, that's a lot. You guys must be good. Let me think for a sec. Okay, I'm in. Excellent. Dieter, unveil the design. Fashion designers Z and Dieter were just about to unveil their design for Emperor Matilda's coronation outfit. Can I get Z drumroll, please? Yeah, we're really good at that. Come on already.
party. Show me, show me, show me, show me. What do you think? Um, I don't get it. It's just a piece of paper that says yes, girl. Because that's what everyone is going to say when they see you. Yes, yes girl. girl. But I want to see the outfit. You have to see the real thing. No drawing would do it justice. Let us get to work and we promise it will be worth the wait. Pinky promise? Sure. One, two, three, pinky promise. Emperor Matilda gave the fashion designers their own suite in the palace so they could get to work. Now kids, let's take a trip to another part of the world where someone else was also getting ready for a big coronation party. Meet Prince Gerald. Prince Gerald was, well, remember when we said Emperor Matilda was a bit much? Well, if she's a bit much, then Prince Gerald was a lot. Ew, you don't expect me to wear these rags to the coronation party, do you? Your Highness, this is a suit made of the finest silk in the world. Well, it smells like worm spit. Okay, how about this velvet cape? A cape? Do I look like a superhero, Chauncey? No, definitely not, sir. I mean, I know I'm big and strong and could probably scale a wall like Spider-Man, but come on. Spider-Man doesn't wear a cape. Okay, Mr. Know-It-All. Your brother is going to wear a simple suit of linen. He'll be quite comfortable. Would you like the tailors to make two? Ew, and look like we're twins? I am not twinning with Joshua. You don't want to twin with me, Gerald? Why not? Because you're my lowly younger brother who will never be king and is therefore a nothing person. Ouch. All right. And I'll never catch Emperor Matilda's eye if I'm dressed like you. It's the goal of His Highness Prince Gerald to woo Matilda and marry her. Thereby forming a mighty global dominion, the likes of which have never been seen. Oh. Well, it's nice to have goals. Chauncey, get Joshy out of here. He's killing my vibe. I'll show myself out. So yeah, Prince Gerald was planning on marrying Emperor Matilda. Of course, he was not the only person vying for a chance to wed the powerful Matilda. There was Lord Blaine of Yorkshire Town, Count Von Winklevoss of Dumberton, Sir Billy Bob of Arkansas Shire, and of course, one can't forget Baron Von Earl Duke, Sir of London Townville Place City. Everyone wanted the prestige and power that would come with marrying Emperor Matilda, and the coronation ball would give them all a chance to win her heart. Emperor Matilda knew all eyes would be on her. She tried to imagine the perfect coronation outfit. What would Z and Dieter create? She could not wait to see. <gasps> Something with sparkle? Maybe a dress completely covered with diamonds? Would you like to dance? Sure! <sighs> Sorry, I can't move this dress, it's too heavy. It's real diamonds. <laughs> nah, too heavy. Hmm. Oh, what about an outfit with stilts so I could look like an elegant giraffe? Okay, no, that's no good. Ooh, I know. What could be better than a dress made of butterflies? Like actual real life butterflies. No one's ever done that. Whoa, 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 help! My dress is flying away. Meanwhile, Z and Dieter were hard at work in their palace suite. Or at least that's how it sounded. But on the other side of the door, not so much. Hmm, what were they up to? Weren't they supposed to be hard at work? After day, Emperor Matilda waited to see the big reveal of Z and Dieter's design of her extra special coronation outfit. Is it ready yet? No, not yet. I don't know. Not quite yet. Oh. Now? No. Yeah, but how about now? No. No. Emperor Matilda was growing more and more impatient. Why don't you just give them a deadline and say if it's not done by then, they're out, fired, scram. Yeah, you're the emperor. They have to do what you say. Yeah, I am the emperor. Jeeves, go tell them my coronation outfit had better be ready by Thursday or else. Or else what? I don't know, just make sure you sound scary and intimidating when you say it. Yes, ma'am. Or else, or else, or else. Ahem, Emperor Matilda has decreed. Um, that means decided. Um, yes. Yeah. You have to have the outfit ready by Thursday. Okay. 
Oh, I almost forgot. Or else. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Bye. Okay, back to business. Hello, fight. It seemed like Z and Dieter were just goofing off and wasting time. And then, all of a sudden, it was Thursday. And for Matilda woke up very, very, very excited. <sighs> oh, today is the day that I see the most fabulous, most beautiful, most perfect outfit in the world. Z and Dieter, on the other hand, woke up like this. Oh no, Z, wake up! It is Thursday! Shh, I'm sleeping! You must wake up! Today is the day the Emperor Matilda is coming to Caesar's design! <gasps> no, we're not ready! Yes, today! Get up! Zinc! Uh. Zinc, zinc! I am thinking, you think! Ah! Hello! Quick, hide! Wait! Close your eyes! Oh, I bet I'm in for a big surprise here. Where is it? Ooh, is this it? It feels weird. No, that's not it. Here. Ooh, I can't wait to try it on. This? You want me to wear this to the coronation? But this just looks like big frilly underoos. No, you wear that under the dress, obviously. Okay, so where's the real dress? You had a deadline, guys. Remember, or else. We know, and we used every available moment to work on this most perfect outfit. Great, so show me. Right, show you. Uh, Dieta, she wants us to show her. Here, this is it. But wait, before you say anything, let me explain to you how special this ensemble is. This, this is a magical dress. This dress can only be seen by people who deserve to see it. You know how everyone is always trying to impress you and be all buddy-buddy with you? Yeah, I'm the emperor. I'm basically the most important person in the world. Exactly, and you can't waste your time with Riff Raff. Anyone who can't see the dress is obviously not worth your time. Only the best people are able to see it. So tell us, what do you think? Do you love it? Well, obviously I think it's gorgeous. Emperor Matilda tried on her new dress. Well, I love it. But deep down, she was super confused. Why couldn't she see it? So. Tell me again who can and cannot see my fabulous, gorgeous, magic dress. It's simple. Anyone who doesn't deserve to see it won't see it. But what do you mean deserve? Can you give me some examples of who would not deserve to see it? Basically anyone who is not worth your time. Enemies, frenemies, villains, ne'er-do-wells. Rapscallions, ragamuffins, Joe Schmoes, the boring, the uncool, the not awesome, etc. What about a romantic suitor who woos me and asks for my hand in marriage? If the person truly loves you, they will be able to see it. Uh, what about Princess Megan, who, like, says she's my friend, but she always does non-friend stuff? Like, she doesn't always share her snacks with me. False friends will not be able to see it. You'll finally be able to know who's fake and who's real in your life. Yeah, no haters allowed. Wow. <laughs> but wait a minute. <laughs> Who would not like me? Because I'm the best, you know? Of course you're the best, Emperor. No one here is questioning that. Can you two see the dress? Um, uh, yeah, of course. Doi, we love it. Have we not said we love it? Because we totally love it. And we can see it. Yep. Good. Well, I'm pretty exhausted from all this, so I think I'll take it up. Dismissed. Once Emperor Matilda was left alone, she took another look in the mirror. She looked up and down and all around. She put on glasses. She squinted. She tried using a magnifying glass. She took a selfie. Nothing worked. She could not see the dress. What does this mean? Is something wrong with me? Am I uncool? Am I not as awesome as I think I am? Emperor Matilda decided she had better test this further. She went around the castle asking people what they thought of her outfit. She had to see if others could see what she herself could not. 
Excuse me, Mr. Butler, do you like my outfit? Um, yes, yes, of course, madam. Is it a pretty dress? Uh, most certainly, your highness. Okay. You, chef, what do you think of my new look? Why, it's very interesting. Well done, your highness. What do you like most about it? Gee, everything about it is beautiful. I really couldn't choose. <sighs> Gardener lady, halt. Yes, your highness. Do you like my dress? Your dress? Uh, yes. <laughs> my dress? You can see it, can't you? Um, yes? Why do you say it like a question? Can you not see it? Is this a trick question? I think she's losing her marbles. Just tell her she looks pretty and move along. You look very pretty in your new dress, highness. Ugh. Everyone claimed they could see the dress. Emperor Matilda did not know what to think. Was it possible that everyone could see it except her? Meanwhile, Friday and Jeeves were also discussing the Emperor's new clothes. So, the dress? The dress. Can you see it? Can you? I asked you first. Let's answer at the same time. Count of three. One, two, three. I, I cannot, cannot see, the, see dress. the dress. Yikes. Yikes is right. Friday and Jeeves went looking for Z and Dieter to find out what was really going on. But the eccentric fashion designers were nowhere to be found. Where are they? Looks like they left in a hurry. How do you know? There's only one bite taken out of this donut. No one takes just one bite of donut. Good point, but why run away so hastily? They must have something to hide. Friday and Jeeves were growing suspicious that the fashion designer Z and Dieter had pulled a trick on Emperor Matilda. Their so-called magic dress might be a big fat lie, and now it looked like they had run away. Very shady. Meanwhile, Emperor Matilda was so confused, but she knew one thing for certain. She couldn't let anyone else know that she could not see the dress. So it was business as usual, and the preparation for the coronation celebration were underway. Okay, the party is in less than 24 hours. Decorations are all set? Yes, your majesty. Ooh, is it too late to coordinate the streamers and balloons to match my dress? Uh, sure. Good idea, your highness. How are we going to do that? Rainbow everything? Ah, good plan. Hello, over here. What about the guest list? Has everyone RSVP? Yes, your majesty. Basically, the whole world will be here. It's gonna be a banger. And how about the DJ? I don't want a repeat of my last royal party. What is this? I cannot dance to this. We got DJ Razzle Dazzle. She's the best in the biz. Okay, good. What about the rest of my look? Your glamour consultants will be here any minute to talk hairstyle, makeup, shoes, and jewelry. Well, I guess I'd better get into my dress then. <laughs> right. Okay, see ya. We have to find Z and Dieter and get to the bottom of this. You kept the donut? It's valuable evidence. Plus, it's strawberry frosted. Can't let a good donut go to waste. Now, where is that dress? Emperor Matilda realized she had a problem. If I can't see the dress, then how am I supposed to find it? Ugh. Oh, here, dressy, dressy, dressy. Here, dressy. Where are you? Ah, it's no use. I'll never find it. Excuse me, your highness. Ah, oh, you startled me. My apologies, highness. I'm your glamour guy, Gary. Nice to meet you. Now are you ready to get glam? Yes, of course. Okay, first things first. Where's that amazing dress I keep hearing about? Um, over there. Where? Over there. Um, I'm sorry, but where exactly? Look, if you can't find it on your own, then maybe you shouldn't be here. But, your highness. No buts. Haven't you heard that my dress is magical? Magic? Like it gives you superpowers? <gasps> Can you fly? No, but that would be cool. <laughs> the magic is that the dress can only be seen by those who deserve to see it. Oh, 
Oh. Right. So if you're telling me you can't see it, glamour guy Gary, then clearly you shouldn't be here in the presence of a super awesome emperor like me. <laughs> of course, your highness. I understand. Wait. Oh, there it is. Oh my, and it is gorgeous. Hmm, describe it to me. Uh, sure. Well, it's long, um, and poofy, shiny, but not too shiny. Hmm, and the color? The color is so you, your highness. Words cannot express how beautiful this dress is. I simply can't say another word. Excellent. Let's get glam. Friday and Jeeves were on the hunt for the missing fashion designers, but Z and Dieter were not on the run. They had simply gone to their next fashion job. And you'll make me the best, most handsome suit ever? We'll design a suit for you, the likes of which no one has ever seen. You're going to like the way you look. We guarantee it. I like the sound of that. Now get to work. Yes, sir. Yes, word had gotten round that Emperor Matilda had hired Dieter and Z. So everyone who was anyone hired the two fashion designers to make their own coronation ensembles. And they were raking in the gold. V are rich. Let's buy a yacht. Ooh, and a miniature horse farm. I've always wanted a tiny horsey. I must say, Dieter, this was our finest idea yet. The invisible dress. We do nothing and get all the money. I knew it. You have a wagon. You're still eating that donut? Oh, I'm savoring it. The big day, the Emperor's coronation party. All across the land, partygoers were getting ready for the celebration. Fashion designers Z and Dieter had gotten quite a few jobs making clothes for the many of the Emperor's guests. Each was told the same thing. This outfit is magic. Only the very best people can see it. Hey, brother. <laughs> Looking good. I know. Those undies really bring out your eyes. What are you talking about? Your underwear? Oh, of course you can't see it. See what? My real clothes? They're magic. Only the very best people can see them. Uh-huh. Go on. So, since you're my annoying little brother who is but a lowly prince and will never be king, it makes sense you wouldn't be able to see my awesome outfit. Right. And you're definitely not just wearing underwear. Ugh, I should have known you wouldn't understand. And you're going to try to win Emperor Matilda's heart wearing your magic suit that's definitely not just underwear? She'll be able to see my real clothes, and believe me, she'll be impressed. Whatever you say, Gerald. Meanwhile, back at the palace, Friday and Jeeves had decided they had to tell the Emperor the truth. She was their friend. And friends don't let friends go to a party wearing big, silly bloomers. What if she doesn't believe us and thinks we just can't see the dress? She'll believe us. She's our friend. Okay, if you say so. Oh. My. Gosh. I look amazing. These shoes. Fabulous. <laughs> These jewels. Gorge. My makeup. Flawless. My hair. Fierce. Work it, girl. Now, time to put on my dress. Can you bring it to me? Glamour Gary stopped snapping. He could not fetch her dress. He couldn't see it. Gary had to think fast. I would, but I uh, have to go to the bathroom. It will just take a second. Just hand me the dress. <laughs> oh, can't. Gotta go. Must be the burrito I ate for breakfast. Friday! Jeeves! I need help! I need help putting on my dress. Your Highness, we need to tell you something. I don't really have time for stories. The coronation starts in an hour. I need my dress. About that. There is no dress. Excuse me? The dress isn't magic. It doesn't exist. The fashion designers tricked you. No, you're just saying that because you can't see the dress. Because you aren't worthy of seeing it. But... No, no but. Now get out, and don't even think about coming to the party. You're uninvited. The party is for friends only. <laughs> Ouch, that was not a nice thing to say. And send in a maid to help me with my dress. Yes, your majesty. When Friday and Jeeves left, Emperor Matilda started to cry. She wasn't sure why. She usually only cried when she wanted something and couldn't have it. 
So why was she crying now? Was she upset because she herself could not see the dress and this confused her? Was she sad that she had spoken to her friends in such a mean way? The coronation party had begun and it was finally time for Emperor Matilda to make her big entrance. She now felt confident the magic dress was real and that Friday and Jeeves were wrong. And now, presenting the one, the only, Emperor Matilda. See, these are my real people. They all love me. They can see the dress. Just then, Emperor Matilda caught sight of Prince Gerald. Huh? He's in his underwear. Hello, your highness. May I be the first to say you look beautiful? You're not the first to say that. A lot of people have said that. Right, right, of course. Well, looks like we've both got good taste. What do you mean? We use the same fashion designers. Your dress looks amazing, by the way. Do you like my suit? Uh, yeah. It's great. I gotta go. Okay, bye. What was that about? Is he crazy? He's in his underwear. What are all these people doing in their underwear? Your dress is awesome. Do you like mine? I used Z and Dieter. They're fabulous. <gasps> what is going on? Wait, it can't be. What, what if I'm not worthy to see their clothes? No, I'm the emperor. I'm the most important person in the whole world. Or were Friday and Jeeves right? Is this a scam? Am I, <gasps> am I in my underwear? <sighs> Excuse me, I need a moment. The good thing about being emperor is that you get a nice cushy throne to sit on, far, far away from everyone else. That comes in handy when you need a minute to think. Okay, let me just sit here and think. I have to figure out what's going on. But she was soon interrupted. Emperor, it is time to accept gifts from neighboring kingdoms. Oh, good, my favorite part. <laughs> People line up and tell me how wonderful I am and they give me presents. This will be a nice distraction from the whole underwear thing. <laughs> Presenting Lord Blaine of Yorkshire Town. Your Majesty, please accept my gift, a giant chocolate crown. Thank you, Lord Blaine. Uh, looks tasty, but may I inquire about your outfit? It's a Z and Dieter design, just like yours. Right. And now, Count Von Winklevoss of Dumbarton. Madam, please accept this pony and this compliment. Your dress is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Next, your majesty, is Sir Billy Bob of Arkansas Shire. Your highness, please accept this novelty thimble set. Is that gold? Yes, your majesty, but its beauty pales in comparison to you. Your dress sure is nice. Cool, 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 thanks. Next. Yes, ma'am. This is Baron Von Earl, Duke Sir of London Townville Place City. And you guessed it, also rocking his undies. Emperor, I wish to give you these diamond earrings. Thank you. I love diamonds. They're expensive. Yes, and might I add, they would look beautiful with your dress. Hmm, my dress. You can see my dress? You're telling me you can see this dress. Is that correct? Yes, of course. Just as I'm sure you can see my suit. Z and Dieter designed it. Emperor Matilda was so confused. She couldn't see any suits. All she could see was a bunch of silly underwear. What was going on? Was the entire world playing a big trick on her? And now, presenting Prince Gerald and Prince Joshua of Cape Dumbledore. Hello again, Matilda. Please accept this ring as a token of my undying affection. Oh, looks like I have room on my pinky. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, that's a really nice suit. Thank you. I was talking to him. Him? Yeah, I like it. Excuse me, your majesty. It's time to do the crown thingy. Your dad's here. Presenting Emperor Ignatius. It is with great honor that I... Emperor Ignatius. Emperor Ignatius, that's me. Let me start over. It is with great honor that I, Emperor Ignatius, present my daughter... Matilda. I know that. It is my great honor to present my daughter, Matilda, with the official very big crown of the empire. I am too old for this job, so she's the boss now. Got it? (laughs) 
What in tarnation? Why is everybody in their underwear? It's the new trend. They're all wearing magic clothes. Surely you can see their real clothing. All I see is a bunch of goofy people dancing around in their underwear. What? <gasps> Freddy and Jeeves are right. I'm not wearing a magic dress at all. I'm just wearing these silly bloomers. <gasps> Emperor Matilda was so embarrassed. All this time she had been bragging about her magical clothes and now she knew for sure there were no magical clothes. Excuse me, your highness. Go away. I've been humiliated at my own party. This was supposed to be a special day. My day. Okay, well, I brought you a piece of cake. I thought that might cheer you up. Oh, uh, it might. Some people might say thank you. Mm, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Sure you don't want any company? Fine, I mean, thank you. Great party. <laughs> it was supposed to be a great party, and it got ruined by my dumb, not magic dress. What am I even saying? There is no dress. It was all made up to make me look silly in front of everyone. Well, you're not the only one. My brother Gerald was prancing around in his undies, too. And all those other guys. But I'm the emperor. People are supposed to respect. Me. And this dress was supposed to show me who my real friends were. And if they can't see the dress, then they don't deserve to be my friend. Maybe it's the opposite. Your real friends should tell you the truth. Oh. Oh no. You're right. Friday and Jeeves tried to tell me. And I was so mean to them. Ugh, I've messed everything up. I am the worst. <laughs> I don't think you're the worst. My brother Gerald is definitely more annoying than you. Jeeves, thanks. Let's go back to the party. This is your night. You should have some fun. I can't. I look silly. Do you want my jacket? No. No? <laughs> Wowzers! <laughs> now let's go. Wait, first I have to do something. Come with me. Emperor Matilda and Prince Joshua ran through the palace. Friday, Jeeves! Friday, Jeeves! But it was no use. Friday and Jeeves were nowhere to be found. I must have hurt their feelings so much that they left the palace forever. But Friday and Jeeves were not gone at all. In fact, they were at the coronation party. You probably didn't notice before, but they were there the whole time. See, they were in disguise. And not because they didn't want to miss the party. They were on a mission. We have to find Z and Dieter. Yeah. They don't get to trick our friend and get away with it. They've got to be here somewhere. Conga. Conga! But then they got swept up in a conga line. There they are. Let's get them. I can't. The conga line is too powerful. We've been overtaken by the dance. Lulu! Come on, this is our chance. How low can you go? How low can you go? go? Woo! Wait, where'd they go? We lost them. Did we lose them? Yeah, like a little koala and a fox are gonna bring us down. Yeah, that would be crazy, right? Yeah, wait. Gotcha! Time to pay the piper, you charlatans. Uh-oh. Come with us. We're taking you to the emperor. What for? What for? For tricking our friend into wearing some silly bloomers to her coronation party. And for taking her gold. We told you, the dress is magic. If you can't see it, that's not our fault. Oh yeah? Jeeves, you take Dieter. I've got Z. Okay, Smarty McSmart Pants. What color is the dress? Blue and pink. Orange and purple. Describe it. It is long with puffy sleeves and ruffles. It's short, covered in sparkles, and has a long train in the back. A choo-choo? You expect me to believe there's a choo-choo train attached to her dress? A train is a long piece of fabric on the back of a dress. Oh, I knew that. What else? Did I already say it's blue and pink? All right, I've heard enough. Let us compare notes. <laughs> You both described totally different dresses. You're fibbers. Come with us. We are bringing you to Emperor Matilda so she can punish you. 
It's no use, they're gone. I don't blame them. I was pretty mean. <laughs> What's everybody yelling for? Let's go find out. You tricked us! Yes, yeah, you realize how silly so I look? Funny. I can't believe I'm wearing this. underwear! Friday, Jeeves, you're here! I know you said we weren't allowed at the party, but we have something to tell you. It's important. Please don't be mad. Uh, mad? I'm not mad. I'm so happy to see you. I owe you a huge apology. You were right. The magic dress was a big ol' sham, a scam, a flim flam. Wait, you know? Yeah, I finally figured it out. That's right, everybody. I'm in my underwear. So what? So is this guy, and that guy over there, and her, and him. Who cares? This is my party, and I'll wear what I want. And furthermore, I hereby decree that every year on this date, we will celebrate with a bloomers only party! What do you want to do about these guys? Throw them in a dungeon? Make them eat worms? Put ketchup in their hair? Um, interesting ideas, but no. The only punishment that they will have is that they have to return the money that they took from us. What? No! I was going to buy a pony. Sorry, you're gonna give the money back and it will be donated to the good people of this empire. <laughs> Ice cream for everyone! Yeah! Mom, Mom, Matilda. Matilda. Oh, and you have to clean up after the party and it's gonna be a rager, so it'll be a big, big mess. Oh. But then we're wearing couture! Uh, well, sorry, you should have thought of that before you scammed half the world and tricked us into wearing our undies. Even if we learned a lesson or two. Yeah. Like, maybe I shouldn't be such a show-off all the time, and maybe I should be grateful for my real friends. That's you guys. Oh, that reminds me. I have to hereby officially decree something. I hereby decree that Friday and Jeeves are now Knights of the Empire. Really? Yep. You've been my friends for pretty much for forever, <laughs> and it's about time you'd be recognized for that. So. Please, Neil. Does anybody have a sword? Ah, why do you need a sword? It's symbolic, don't worry. You knelt mere servants. Now rise up as Knights of the Empire. Now let's boogie! I'm so inspired by your wisdom and kindness, Emperor Matilda. May I have this dance? Oh, I'm sorry, my dance card is full. Come on, Prince Joshua, let's get down to Groove Town. It had a rough start, but the coronation party proved to be a success. Emperor Matilda finally learned what it meant to be a friend, someone who will tell you the truth, someone who will be there when you need them and who has patience with you when you're maybe not so kind, someone who will bring you chocolate cake when you're feeling sad to make you feel better. To good friends! To good, good friends! friends. Oh, and everyone had a blast dancing around in their silly underwear. The end! Ah, oh, I'm so glad there was a happy ending. To friendship. To friendship. See you all next time, friends. For now, subscribe to Cool School and follow the whole Cool School gang on Instagram and Facebook. Bye! Bye. See ya! Hi, kids. I'm Miss Booksy, and this is Storytime. Today, we're reading Rumpelstiltskin. Wiggle, snap, story time. Long, long ago, there was a dad, and he had a kid. A daughter, actually. That's me. <laughs> Together, we made fine designer clothing. The clothes we made were so fancy that the king wanted to wear them. The clothes you make are fantastic. Ah, oh, gee, thank you, King. Thanks a whole kit and caboodle. But my daughter's the real artist. She's so delicate when she's spinning. I bet she could spin straw into gold. Well, as you might know, kings like gold. They like gold a lot. Gold, you say? Hmm. I'd like to meet this daughter of yours. Send her to my castle for brunch this Sunday. We'll have melba toast and salmon locks. So that Sunday, I went to the king's castle for brunch. But instead of melba toast and salmon locks, oh, I got horse hay and dungeon locks. Oh dear, the king locked me away in the dungeon. What? No, that can't be. You can come out once you spin all this straw into gold. 
I didn't actually know how to spin straw into gold. That was just a figure of speech. Somebody please help me! Why, hello there. A little elf man appeared. I see you need to sew some straw into gold. That happens to be my specialty. Mm, that's pretty random. <laughs> but okay, I don't have much, but I'll give you anything. Hmm, how about that necklace of yours? It's very pretty. And even though this necklace was a gift for my BFF Snow White, I made the deal. I couldn't be stuck in this stinky dungeon forever. What would you do if you were there? The elf man worked his magic. He sang while he worked, which was kind of annoying, but he was helping me out. <laughs> when the king came back in the morning, the hay was gone. And in its place, pure gold. The king was utterly flabbergasted. I'm utterly flabbergasted. Well, I'm pretty good at this, uh, obviously. <laughs> good! I want more! So this time I'm going to give you 100 times the hay. If you can spin it all to gold by morning, I will let you out. But if not, you will be sent out into the ocean on a leaky ship, never to return! Oh, and the ship will be full of singing mice, who are terrible singers. <laughs> now get back to sewing. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Mean? So night came and I didn't know what else to do, so I, I called out. Uh, hey, magic little dude. Um, I forgot your name, but I, uh, I need you. So, you need more help, do ya? I do. I do. I do. It's gonna cost you. Anything. I'll give you anything you want. Pinky promise. Again, he sang as he worked. Spinning, sewing, gold glowing, taking hay and making it pay. It took all night, and I got seriously tired of that song. But my little friend sewed every last bit of straw into gold. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How much do I owe you? On the night of your first son's first birthday, I will return to take him as my own. Wow, that is so mean. And he laughed all crazy-like and oh, disappeared. Wait, what? He didn't say he was going to take my son on his first birthday, did he? Nah, that would be crazy. The next day, the king saw all that gold and he was so excited, he let me go. So fast forward a bit. I'm in charge of my own designer clothing company. I'm married, I have a super cool house, a dog and a cat. I had forgotten all about the little elf who had spun straw into gold. I was living happily ever after. Until the night of my first son's first birthday. We were all celebrating, having a great time, when the little old elf crashed the party. Here I am. Give me that baby. Ah, watch out. Okay, funny story. I thought you were kidding. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Not really. You made a pinky promise. Okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you gold. Tons of gold. I don't need gold. I can turn star into gold myself, remember? But I'll make a deal with you, lady. If you can guess my name, then you keep your son. But if you don't, I'll take him and your first daughter. Do we have a deal? I began to guess. Paul, no, Mike, no, Mark, no, Sean. Uh -uh. Sean spelled S E A N. Nope. Sean spelled S H A U N. Not even close. Mm, Tim, nope. Tom, nope. Tyler, nope. Taylor, uh -uh. Kanye, Dragon. Senior, nope. Junior. Nope. Oh, nope. I guessed hundreds of names, hundreds upon hundreds of names, but I just couldn't come up with it. To make matters worse, the horrible little elf was leaning over the baby's crib, singing a lullaby. That's my job. I'll have a son, I'm gonna win. She'll never guess my name, cause it's Rumpelstiltskin. Just then, the baby giggled and spoke his very first word. He said, Rumpelstiltskin. Everyone was so excited, as they always are when babies say their first words. What did he say? Nothing. Um, I think he wants his bottle. Rumpelstiltskin, Rumpelstiltskin. Your name is Rumpelstiltskin. No, no, no. Won! <laughs> Yay! I'm so happy! 
but seriously, we called the police a long time ago anyway. You think you were just gonna come in here and take my baby? I'm his mom. <laughs> you're a bad elf and you're going to jail. And so we were free from Rumpelstiltskin forever. So my family went on a vacation cruise to celebrate, and the mice on this ship were excellent singers. <laughs> the brunch buffet was pretty good, too. Smoked salmon with perfection. Mwah! The end. Wow, that was so much fun. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Hi kids, I'm Miss Booksy and this is Storytime. Today we're reading The Wizard of Oz. Chapter one, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hi, <laughs> I lived in a place called Kansas with my aunt and uncle. <laughs> uncle Henry and Aunt Em. Hello. Hello. We lived on the prairie, which is a great big piece of land that stretches for miles and miles and miles and miles and is very flat. So flat and empty that you could stand in your front yard and see all around you. Oh look, there's Farmer Ted. Hey, Farmer Ted. <laughs> he can't hear me, of course. He's way too far away. What? <laughs> Life on our farm was very hard. Aunt Em and Uncle Henry worked so hard that they never even had time to smile. In fact, when I was little, Aunt Em had completely forgotten what happiness sounded like. So whenever I laughed, she would do this. <laughs> oh, heavens to Betsy, you startled me. Everything at our house looked sad. The hot sun had baked everything until the land and all the buildings and even the people looked dried out and gray. That is so sad. Yeah, just like that. Just like an old black and white movie. The only thing that made me happy was my little dog, Toto. <laughs> Hi, Toto. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Is it you? Is it you? <laughs> Sorry, but come on, look at how cute he is. Okay, on with the story. Here's where things get exciting. So, one day Toto and I were playing fetch with the stick. That's literally the only toy either of us had, but we made the best of it. <laughs> when we heard a crazy laugh sound. It sounded like a train. I know because I rode a train once all the way to Oklahoma. <laughs> anyway, the sound was getting louder and louder and louder. Toto, we have to hide. I think a freight train is coming for us or something. Wait, but there aren't any tracks here. How in the heck? Ah, a flying cow! Dorothy, a cyclone's coming! Cyclone? Oh no, cyclones are super scary. You know what a cyclone is, right? Tornado, twister, dust devil. Ah, this is scary. Yeah, that. Toto, the house is totally flying. Oh my, this is even more exciting than the train ride. I wonder when we're gonna land, or where we're gonna land. Oh, oh, Toto, I think we've landed. I hope we're not too far from home. I wouldn't know the first thing about moving a house back into the yard. Wow, okay, we're definitely far from home. I bet we're even farther than Oklahoma. <laughs> What's that? A kitty cat? <laughs> <laughs> hey, who are you? He's a munchkin, and he's very grateful to you, noble sorceress. Grateful? To me? Why? Because you squished the Wicked Witch of the East. What? Me? No way, I wouldn't even squish a fly, asked Toto. <laughs> but you did squish her, or your house did anyway. Look! But I didn't do that on purpose, I promise. Don't worry, we're happy she's gone. She was a very wicked witch who ruled over the munchkins for hundreds of years. Really? Yes, she was wicked. She was awful. She was the worst. Are you a munchkin? 
No, dear, I'm the witch of the north. Oh, a witch? A, a witch? Oh, no. But you seem nice. I thought all witches were wicked. I'm a good witch. Unfortunately, a good witch's powers are never as strong as a wicked one's. But now there is only one wicked witch left. Ah, uh, where? Not here, sillies. The last wicked witch rules over the west. And she's even more wicked than her sister. Hey, she's gone. Did she come back to life? Oh no, zombie witches must be the absolute worst. No, no. See, when a witch is defeated, she disappears. Poof, like magic. Yay! The munchkins love magic. Oh yeah? <laughs> well, check this out. Ah! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, it was only a trick. I thought you liked magic tricks. Magic's supposed to be nice. That was scary. Sheesh, tough crowd. I probably ought to get back to Kansas. Are you the good witch of Kansas? Me? No, there are no witches in Kansas. <laughs> but you did fly here. Oh, no, that was just my house. <laughs> my house did the flying, but I can't fly. <laughs> I promise I'm not a witch. So anyway, how do I get back? Is there a train or something? Nope, guess you'll just have to stay. Yay, you can be our queen. All hail queen, what's your name? Dorothy? Oh, All hail, hail Queen, Queen Dorothy! Dorothy. Hooray! Yeah. Hurrah! What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on! Chapter two, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The munchkins cheered and celebrated their new queen. Oh, All hail, hail the queen, queen Dorothy! Our queen! But Dorothy didn't want to be queen. She just wanted to go home. I don't want to live in, wait, what is this place called? Oz, dear. You are in the land of Oz. Why are you sad? Your house is right here. Yes, but it's not in the right place. And I'm sure Uncle Henry and Aunt Em must be so confused. They've never had their whole house just disappear like this. Let us cheer you up. Quick, someone tell a joke. Why didn't the Wicked Witch of the East cross the road? Why? Because you squished her with your house. <laughs> Uh, what, too soon? Okay, that's pretty good, but how about this one? I just flew in from Kansas and boy, my house is tired. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny. Okay, anyway, so we were talking about how I might get home. Can't go to the south. It's a great big desert where no one could survive. Except for the quadlings, but they eat sand and drink sunshine. Weird, next. And you can't go east because there are big mountains with giant birds and wapangs. Don't know what that is, but it sounds scary. Next. <laughs> and you could try and go west, but that's where the other wicked witch lives, and she is seriously wicked. No thanks. <laughs> Guys, what am I gonna do? Well, you could go center. Go center? Yes, go straight to the center of Oz, to the city of emeralds. That's where the wizard lives. He can help you get home. The wizard? Is he wicked? Oh, not at all. He's very wise. Well, how do I get to the center? To get to the city of emeralds, one must follow the road of yellow bricks. Road of yellow bricks? That road right there. Will it be dangerous? I will bless you with as much good magic as I can, but you must be careful. Good luck, Dorothy. I'm too tired and hungry to start my journey now. May I stay here a night, Munchkins? Of course you can, Queen Dorothy. The Munchkins were so excited to have Dorothy stay with them, even if it were only for one night. They prepared a feast of beautiful fruits that Dorothy had never seen, and lots of tiny cakes filled with candy and ice cream. Delicious! We want you to have these, Queen Dorothy. Me? Really? Well, you are the one who defeated the Wicked Witch. And they're also way too big for our munchkin feet. They're really beautiful. And legend says they're magic. Maybe they'll protect you on your journey to the Emerald City. Yay, magic to the rescue. Well, they are super comfy and they do match my dress. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. The next morning, Dorothy and Toto said goodbye to the munchkins and began their trip down the yellow brick road when they passed a farm where something odd caught Dorothy's eye. Toto, look at that scarecrow. He almost looks like a real man, doesn't he? <laughs> Did you just wink? 
Maybe. <laughs> you can talk? I've never seen a talking scarecrow. Well, how do you do, Mr. Scarecrow? Not very well. Oh, no? A lot of crows here? It's not that. I'm just very uncomfortable up here. I mean, I got a pole stuck in my back. But all scarecrows do. Well, trust me, it's terrible. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Who's that? The munchkin who put you up there? No, the crows. <coughs> Ugh, get out of here. Oh, right. <laughs> well, why don't you just get down from there? That would be amazing. Why didn't I think of that? Oh, wait, I know. It's because I don't have a brain. You don't? Nope, nothing but straw between my ears. That's too bad. I really like having a brain. At least I think I do. But it's my brain that makes me think that. Uh, I don't get it. Sorry, I'll help you down. Huzzah! So, what's your name? Oh, how impolite of me. I'm Dorothy from Kansas. I'm on my way to see the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard? I bet he has brains. Yes, and he's going to help me get back home. Hey, maybe he could give you some brains. Why didn't I think of that? Mm, the whole brain thing. <laughs> oh, right, the brain thing. See, it's really annoying. Well, it's settled. You'll come with me to the Emerald City, and the wizard will help me get to Kansas, and he'll give you a brain. Huzzah! And off they went to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter three, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. There they are, Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow traveling the yellow brick road. They walked for miles and miles. And finally, phew, I'm pooped. Let's just sit down and rest for a while. OK. Wait, why? Because I'm tired and hungry. That means I need to eat something. I'm never hungry, and that's a good thing because my mouth is only painted on. If I cut a hole there, all my straw would fall out. Then you'd have a very funny shaped head. It's true. Dorothy, can you tell me more about Kansas? Sure. I live there with my Aunt Em and Uncle Henry and Toto, of course. <laughs> it's very quiet, except for when there's a cyclone and everything is all gray. <laughs> Not beautiful and colorful like here. Well, why do you want to go back if it's so nice here? Because Kansas is my home, and there's no place like home. Oh, so cute. Then why did you come here in the first place? I didn't mean to. My house just landed here after a storm. Long story. <laughs> and then yada yada, I squished the Wicked Witch of the East, and now I have her shoes. Do you like them? They are very pretty. But wait, did you say you squished the Wicked Witch of the East? Yes, but not on purpose. The munchkins were very happy. <laughs> I'm their queen now. Wow! But enough about me. Tell me your story. Me? I don't know anything. I was only made one day ago. Ooh, tell me about that. Okay. I was made by a farmer. First he made my head and he painted on ears. Then I could hear. Next I had eyes and I could see. Then the farmer painted on a nose. I could smell corn and crows. Ah! Yikes, ah! crows. Luckily, I couldn't scream because I didn't have a mouth yet. So the farmer didn't know that I was afraid of the crows. Imagine a scarecrow scared of crows. Not good. When the farmer finished putting me all together, he stuck me up on a stick in the middle of the field. I didn't like being left alone with all those crows, so I tried to run, but it was no use. I was stuck. The crows all laughed at me and pecked my head and ate up all the farmer's corn right in front of me. They were so mean. That's so sad. Well, except for one very old crow. Just ignore those silly crows. But why aren't they afraid of me? I'm supposed to be a scarecrow. They know you're stuck up here and don't know how to get down. If only you had a brain. And I decided right then that I would get a brain one day. I just didn't know how. Then you came along. And now we're on our way to get me a brain from the great Oz of Emerald City. Speaking of, I'm ready to journey on. Let's go. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow set off again on the road of yellow bricks. Everything was going just fine, until... What was that? You're asking me? I don't have a brain. I don't really know stuff. Oh, right. <laughs> Wait, I think 
hear it again? Shh, Toto! I hope it's not a crow. Ah! Don't chop me! I would never! Why are you groaning? I've been stuck in this position for a whole year. It's very uncomfortable. Well, what can I do to help? Get my oil can, please. Oh, my joints are rusted stiff. Get my neck first. Ah, much better. Wow, this is so fun. Now my arm, please. What a relief. I thought I might be holding that forever. Feel better? A million times better. You saved my life. Dorothy saved my life, too. And she squished the Wicked Witch of the East. Whoa, are you a witch? No, why does everyone keep asking me that? I'm just a girl from Kansas. We're on our way to the Wizard of Oz. I'm getting a brain. And I'm hoping to get back home. Do you know the great Oz? I never met him, but hey, do you think he could give me a heart? You don't have a heart? How sad. I think. It is sad. Enough to make me cry. But if I cry, I'll get all stiff and rusty again. Well, you absolutely must join us on our trip. To the wizard we go. Wait, oil can. Good call. OK, now to the wizard we go. What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter four, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Hey, look, 475 smiles to Emerald City. I think they mean miles. No, distance is measured in smiles in Oz. How long are they? I don't know. Neither do I, but maybe that's because we don't have brains. You don't have a brain either? Nope, I used to have both. And believe me, the heart is more important. Why is that? The heart is the way to love. Love is happiness, and happiness is the best thing in the world. Well, how did you lose your heart in the first place? It's a long story. We like stories. <laughs> OK. I was a wood chopper, chopping trees and selling the wood for a living. Then I met a girl, and we fell in love. I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. I was so happy. Yay, what a happy ending. There's more. She lived with a selfish old woman who didn't want her to get married. She wanted the girl to stay and work for her forever. The woman went to the Wicked Witch and paid her to curse me. A curse? Oh no. What did the witch do? She took my leg. How was I supposed to work standing on just one leg? Oh my! I went to a tinsmith who made me a new leg made of tin. The old woman was very mad. She paid for another curse and this time I lost my other leg. The tin smith built me another leg of tin. Then what happened? Next, the witch cursed my arms and my head and all of me until I was a man made of tin. But the girl still loved me, and I loved her. The wicked witch did the worst thing she could possibly do. What? what? She cursed my heart. <coughs> the tinsmith didn't know how to make a new heart for me. And without a heart, I couldn't feel love. I've been sad and lonely ever since. What a sad story, I think. Maybe if I had a brain, I would have understood it better. We'll get you your heart. The wizard is wise and good, and he'll help all of us. I just know it. The gang continued toward the city of Emeralds, saddened by the Tin Woodman story. But soon, sadness gave way to scaredness. These woods are kind of scary. I wonder how many more smiles until we're out of here. We're safe. I have my oil can. The scarecrow can't feel anything. And you have the mark of the good witch and the magic slippers. But Toto, what's protecting him? We are. Ah, we are? <laughs> oh, Whew, that was a close one. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. A big beast like you biting a poor little dog. I didn't bite him. No, but you tried to. You're nothing but a great big coward. I know, I'm sorry. Going after a scarecrow, a tin man, and a tiny dog. Oh, scarecrow? That sounds scary. 
see. I'm the most cowardly coward who ever lived. It's okay to be scared sometimes, but you can't go around picking on smaller things just so you can feel brave. Where'd you get your courage? I don't know. I guess I've just naturally been tough. I wish I was tough. I've always been afraid of everything. Bears, spiders, kittens. Kittens? Who's afraid of kittens? Mice are, but I'm afraid of mice too. Hi, Vey. Let's go, guys. Wait, you're just gonna leave me here? Out in these scary woods all by myself? Let me come with you. I'll protect you. Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> I'm really sorry I scared you. It was a silly old thing to do, I know. I just wanted to look fearless. Oh, please tell Toto I'm sorry too. Wait. <laughs> We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. I'm going to get a brain. And I'm getting a heart. Maybe the wizard could give you courage? Is the wizard very scary? Wait, never mind. I don't even care. I'll go ask the Wizard of Oz for courage. See, you're already a little braver. <laughs> what are you asking the wizard for? I just want to go home to Kansas. Is Kansas a scary place? Wait, wait, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Then let's go find that wizard. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter five, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, the Lion, and Toto were officially off to see the wizard. The Scarecrow would ask for brains, the Tin Man for a heart, and the Lion would get some courage, and that is, if he could work up the nerve to ask. <laughs> and of course, Dorothy and Toto would ask the good wizard to get back home to Kansas. All they had to do was follow the road of yellow bricks. Uh-oh. Now why wouldn't they build a yellow brick bridge as well? It doesn't look so far. I could probably jump across. Well, look who's being brave. <laughs> I'd be way too scared to cross. Now why'd you have to go and say that? For a second I forgot I was a Freddy cat. You can do it. Don't be scared. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But you're gonna have to carry each of us across one at a time. You mean I have to do it more than once? Take me first. I'm made of straw, so if you drop me, I won't be hurt. All you have to do is stuff me back together. Good thinking. And I don't even have a brain. And me with no courage. What a team. Here we go. Wow, this is so fun. Woohoo! You did it! I knew you could! <laughs> the cowardly lion bravely carried across the others one by one. Oh, great work! <laughs> now let's go meet the wizard! The gang marched forth and soon found themselves in a very dark and scary forest. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Nope. Nope. Not okay. What is that? Kalitas! What's a Kalita? A very scary creature. Well, you thought Toto was scary, so... <laughs> Kalitas have the body of a bear and the head of a tiger. Oh my! Uh, that is scary! Told ya! Oh, what are we gonna do? Run! That's way too far to jump across. <laughs> How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Hey, the Tin Man could cut down that tree and we could use it to walk across. Splendid idea. Okay, steady now. The Kalitas are coming. Oh, yay, we all made it. Kalitas! Ah! I've got it. Tin Man, chop this side of the tree. That was close. Great job, Tinny. <laughs> hey, it was the Scarecrow's idea. You sure you don't already have a brain in there? <laughs> Dress straw, I'm sure of it. If you say so. You guys ready to hit the yellow brick road again? Just a second, my heart is racing. Ooh, can I listen? Wow, what a ticker. You'll get one soon. And I'll get my courage. And I'll get my brain. Let's go. It had been a long and scary journey so far, but they were determined to find the wonderful Wizard of Oz, even if it meant they might run into the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs>
What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter six, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy, Toto, the Scarecrow, the Tin Woodman, and the Lion continued along the road of yellow bricks, anxious and excited to find the wizard. Look, a river. Oh good, I sure am thirsty after all that jumping and running. Um, guys, how are we going to get across? Again? Okay, seriously, who designed this road? This is just poor planning. It's too wide for me to jump. It's too wide for the tree thing. Hey, what if I chop some wood and build a raft? Great idea! <laughs> the Tin Woodman got to work and soon built a perfectly seaworthy vessel. The gang hopped on and began to paddle toward the other shore. There she is! The brat who squished my sister! It's payback time, sweetheart! <sighs> Suddenly, the wind picked up and the river began rushing. Oh no! We're floating away from the yellow brick road! And straight for the land of the Wicked Witch of the West! The scariest witch of all! The witch? Oh no! What are we gonna do? I can't swim! I'll fall apart! And I'll rest! Paddle harder! They all paddled as hard as they could, but the poor scarecrow got his paddle stuck in the mud, and the raft went rushing on down the river without him. Scarecrow! Dorothy! We'll come back for you, I promise! Well, here I am stuck on a pole again, and this time in the middle of a river. I guess I'll never get any brains. Maybe I can swim against the current. What about us? Grab a hold of my tail, and I'll pull you to shore. Ah, there's a fish! It's just a tiny little goldfish. It touched me! Phew, we made it. But where are we? We're so far from the yellow brick road and our poor scarecrow. This is so sad. Don't cry, you'll rust. We'll just have to walk along the river until we find him. Dorothy, Toto, the lion, and the tin man walked along the river looking for their friend. There he is! Shoo! Arr! Go away! Whew, that was a close one. Dorothy, you came back! Of course! We're here to save you! Okay, yeah, um, how are we gonna do that? There's no wood on this side of the river, so I can't build another raft! Lion, can you swim out there to rescue him? I'm so tired and weak from all the swimming. Plus, I'm scared of crows. A lion scared of a crow? That's silly. Ah, big stork! Our friend is out there stuck. We have to save him. He's coming with us to find the Wizard of Oz. This isn't the right road. You need the yellow one. We know, we just got a little off track. <laughs> but now we can't leave until we save the Scarecrow. I can try to lift him. Mind you, I'm used to carrying babies, not straw people. He might be too heavy. Oh, he's very light. Okay. Oh no! Incoming! Oh shush! I'm here to save ya! Whoa! Hooray! Thank you so much! <laughs> no prob! Well, I better be on my way. Watch out for the Wicked Witch of the West! She's a tough nut! We will! See ya! <laughs> well gang, shall we? Yup! I think the yellow brick road is just across this field of flowers! Ooh, poppies! They're so pretty! <laughs> Yes, they are. And just wait until you smell them. The Wicked Witch of the West knew these poppies gave off a very powerful scent, one that would make even the largest beasts fall into a never-ending sleep. When you're asleep, I'll take back those sapphire slippers, and then you'll be powerless. I'm getting sleepy. <sighs> Me too. Sweet dreams. <laughs> What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure, come on. Chapter seven, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. We really need to get back to the yellow brick road. But maybe just a little nappy wappy foist. Yeah, <sighs> nighty night. That's right, go to sleep, Dorothy. Now, time for mama to get some new shoes. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. Meow. Must be having a nightmare, scaredy cat. Okay, back to the shoes. Ha, they're mine. 
Wait a second. They're stuck! The witch pulled with all her might, but she could not remove the shoes. They must be protected by magic. Well, I also have magic. And my flying monkeys! The Wicked Witch of the West summoned her flying monkeys! Sup, boss? Take this girl to my castle! Aye, aye. <laughs> How is Dorothy going to get home now? Sleep tight, boys! When you wake, your little friend Dorothy will be long gone, and the sapphire slippers will be mine! All mine! <laughs> Once the flying monkeys had carried Dorothy away from the poppies, the flower's power wore off, and Dorothy woke up. Ah! This frightened the monkeys. Ah! And they promptly dropped Dorothy to the ground below. Ow! Oh, okay, that was scary. But look, I'm back on the yellow brick road. But what about my friends? If I go back for them, the poppies will make me fall asleep forever. What to do? Dorothy thought and thought, but she couldn't come up with a solution. Until... Wait a second, these shoes are supposed to be magical, and the good witch supposedly blessed me with some kind of magic. I must be able to do something. Hmm. Dorothy tried to get her magic shoes to come up with something magic. She tapped them together. She tried doing a dance routine. She tried saying some magic sounding words. Ta-da! Abracadabra! Kazam! But nothing seemed to work. It's useless. What is? Who said that? I did, down here. That is amazing. Oh, hi. <laughs> you seemed upset just now. Anything I can do to help? I don't think so. My friends and I are supposed to go see the Wizard of Oz, but we fell asleep in that field of poppies over there. But then I woke up and these flying monkeys were carrying me away. I screamed and they dropped me. And here I am. Flying monkeys, eh? They work for the Wicked Witch of the West! Oh no! But it's a good thing you got out! The poppies are very dangerous! Your friends will sleep forever if we don't save them! But how do we do that? The other mice and I can go get them! We've lived here forever and the poppies don't bother us! But my friends are way too big for mice to carry! They may be too much for one mouse alone, but the whole crew? Piece of cake! The mouse squeaked out a call to the other mice, and soon there were hundreds of mice gathering around Dorothy. You wait here. We'll be back in a sec. And the mice scurried off into the field of poppies. Dorothy waited, and soon she saw her friends, still in a deep sleep, being carried across the flowers. You should have warned us that one of your friends is a scary lion. Oh, he's not that scary at all. Watch. <laughs> Eek, mouse. See? What's going on? We all fell asleep in the field of poppies, and then the wicked witch's flying monkeys took me. But then I fell down here, and these lovely mice helped save you. How kind! And look, we're so close to the Emerald City! Let's go! Bye-bye, mouse friends! Thanks again for helping us. Anytime! Goodbye! And once again, Dorothy and her friends were off to see the wonderful Wizard of Oz! What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter eight, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. Dorothy and the gang skipped along the yellow brick road and before long, they saw it. <gasps> the Emerald City. Whoa. Let's go. Hello. Yes. We're here to see the wizard. And why, may I ask? Because I want a brain. And I a heart. I want courage. And I want to go home to Kansas. Hold, please. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I see. Hmm. <laughs> oh, very well. Okay, goodbye. The wizard will see you. Wonderful! Yes, he is. Right this way. Dorothy and the gang were led through the all-green, very sparkly, emerald-laden city. Wow! Pretty! I find this green very soothing. You first. Wish me luck. I hope they'll be okay. Hello? What do you want? Hi, sir. I want to ask you, please, if you will help me return home. Where is home? Kansas, sir. Oh, you don't say. Oh, have you been there? <clears throat> and why should I grant you this request? Because you're wonderful, and everyone says so. Even the good witch of the North said so. She did? I mean, how do you know her? Oh, I met her in the Munchkin Land. See, I landed in Oz rather accidentally. My house, it got swept up in a tornado, and I... 
It landed on the Wicked Witch of the East, and it squished her. Long story short, everybody told me to come here and that you could help me get home to Kansas. So, will you help me? You squish the Wicked Witch? Yes. I will help you get home. You will? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! But you must do something first. Anything. Your wish is my command. You must defeat the Wicked Witch of the West. Hold up, what? You squish the Wicked Witch of the East. Now go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. But I didn't mean to hurt the first witch. That was an accident. I couldn't hurt anyone on purpose. Not even a Wicked Witch. Then I cannot help you. Next. Dorothy was devastated. She went out to the others and tried to hide her disappointment. That is so sad. How did it go? It was interesting. Good luck in there, Scarecrow. But the Scarecrow went in and came out just as disappointed as Dorothy. Then the Tin Man, then the Lion. Turns out they all got the same answer. Unless they defeated the Wicked Witch of the West, the wizard would not help them. I'll never get a brain. I'll never have a heart. I'll never get courage. And I'll never see Aunt Em or Uncle Henry or Kansas ever again. <laughs> What's wrong? The wizard told us he can't help us unless we go squish the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> Oof, scary. Well, good luck. Well, we're not going to do it. Come on, guys. Let's go. Where to? I don't know. Maybe we can go look for the Good Witch of the North. Maybe she'll help us. But when Dorothy and her friends left the Emerald City, they were in for a surprise. <laughs> oh, Dorothy! The Wicked Witch of the West? Run! But the Wicked Witch was too fast for them. Her flying monkeys swooped in and snatched up the whole gang. Take that scarecrow and scatter his straw around until he's just a pile of clothes. And put that tin man in the recycling bin. Put the lion in a cage and sell him to the zoo. What about her? Take Dorothy to my castle. I'll take care of her. <laughs> now fly, monkeys, fly! Uh-oh, kids. This does not look good. What do you think is gonna happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter nine, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. The Wicked Witch of the West had ordered the flying monkeys to carry Dorothy and her friends to different locations. The Tin Man was to be put in the recycling bin, the scarecrow pulled into pieces, and the lion locked away and sold to the zoo. Dorothy's fate was to be delivered to the witch's castle, a visit she was not looking forward to. Hey, guys, how about just dropping me off here? I'll, I'll run along and I'll never bother the Wicked Witch again. No way. Yeah, sorry, kid. You do not want to make the Wicked Witch angry. Yeah, I guess you're right. But the good news is we won't hurt you. Okay, good to know. Thanks, but why? You wear the sapphire slippers. They're magic. Yeah, I heard that, but they haven't done anything magical so far. Well, you better watch out. The witch is definitely going to try to take those. The witch? Oh, no. The flying monkeys were right. The Wicked Witch of the West wanted nothing more than to get those sapphire slippers from Dorothy. When she arrived at the witch's castle, Dorothy was forced to do chores. And all the while, the witch watched, just waiting to take the shoes. Gotta get those shoes. Don't you want to change before you sweep up all that garbage? You'll get your shoes dirty. I'm okay, thanks. Oh, that floor is going to get slippery. Don't you think you should wear some less slippery shoes? Get it? Because they're slippers? But seriously, get me the shoes! I got it. Good one. But no, I'm okay in these shoes. Geez, she really wants these shoes. And why is this castle so dirty? Ew. The witch waited and waited, but the only time Dorothy ever removed her slippers was when she took a bath. But the wicked witch was dreadfully afraid of water, so she never dared try to steal them during bath time. I guess I'll just have to wait a little longer. Drat! Then one day, the witch's wait was finally over. How are they ever gonna get out of this one? Dorothy was dusting a super high shelf when one of her slippers slipped right off. I got it! <laughs> it's mine! It's mine! Now give me the other one! Give me! No, you give me! You're powerless with only one shoe! So are you! Give it! No! Come on! Stop it! Ah! 
That's another mess. You make me clean all day anyway. Not that. I'm melting! Say what now? I'm melting! You melted me! You knew I couldn't touch water! I thought you were just afraid of it. Now you've destroyed me just like you destroyed my sister! You're a terrible girl! You're a bad, no good, stinking... Blah, 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 blah. But the witch melted before she could get out the last insult. Oh, I guess that's why she hated water. Who would have thunk it? Suddenly, Dorothy heard a familiar sound. It was a clanking of metal, a kind of swooshing sound, followed by a ferocious roar. Hey guys, how did you get here? I thought I'd never see you again. Wow, this is so fun. No time to explain now. We have to rescue you from the Wicked Witch. Come on. Thanks, but it's all good. She melted. <laughs> uh? huh? I'll explain later, too. Let's go see the wizard. Oh, yeah. Now he'll grant our wishes. Hooray! Hooray! The gang set out on their journey back to the Emerald City. The Scarecrow would get his brains, the Tin Man would get his heart, the Cowardly Lion would get his courage, and Dorothy and Toto would finally go back home to Kansas. And when they arrived, the wizard did not seem happy to see them. What are you doing here? I told you not to come back until you destroyed the Wicked Witch. And we have your greatness. This is not a joke. I know, she's gone. Dorothy melted her! Accidentally, but yeah, she's gone. <laughs> so we've come back so you can grant our wishes. Let's keep reading. Oh, I forgot to say please. Please, sir. <laughs> I cannot grant your wishes. Now go away. Wait, what? What do you mean you can't grant our wishes? So I can't go home to Kansas? <laughs> I won't get a brain. I won't get a heart. I won't get any courage. This is baloney. You're supposed to be some wise and wonderful wizard. You're a charlatan, a humbug. Where are you? If you won't give me courage, then at least get some for yourself and come out and face us. Who are you? The wizard? What do you think is going to happen next? Let's go on another adventure. Come on. Chapter 10, here we go. Wiggle, snap, story time. So you're the mighty and wonderful Wizard of Oz? Well, I'm um, actually from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I landed here accidentally some years ago and I somehow convinced everyone that I was a wizard. And well, here we are. So you're not a wizard. So you don't have any power. Um, no, not at all. We came all this way and did all of this for nothing? But you did destroy the Wicked Witch. That's a pretty big deal. How did you do it? Dorothy and the gang explained how it all went down. First, of course, they had been captured by the flying monkeys. The scarecrow had been pulled apart and scattered in a field. He lay in pieces when he suddenly had a bright idea. He knew that crows are pretty clever, so he called out and asked them to help put him back together, and they did. Once he was back to his old self, the Scarecrow went to find the Tin Man. The Tin Man had been sold for scrap at a salvage yard and was feeling sadder than ever. But the Scarecrow put him back together, polished him up, cause he had rusted quite a bit from crying. That is so sad. And they set off to find the lion. The lion had been locked up in a tiny cage and sold to the zoo. It was not a nice zoo at all. It was gloomy and full of terrible creatures like Kalitas. Remember those? Very scary. Not a good place for a lion with no courage. There, the scarecrow had another bright idea. He asked the tin man to use a bit of his metal to pick open the lock on the cage. And then the lion was free. It was time to save Dorothy. But first, the tin man stopped to unlock each and every cage because it made him too sad to see any creature locked up, even Kalita's. The Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion headed toward the Wicked Witch's castle. They were all very scared, especially when the flying monkeys saw them and swooped in. But the Lion put on his brave face and roared, making all the monkeys fly away shrieking. He was ready to take on the Wicked Witch too, but when they got inside the castle, they found Dorothy had already melted her. And so, there you have it. That's how we defeated the Wicked Witch. Too bad it was all for nothing. That's not true. You've saved everyone in Oz from the Wicked Witch. You'll be celebrated here forever, Dorothy. 
You'll be a star. That is amazing. But I just want to go home. And I want a brain. I want my heart. And I want my courage. Scarecrow, you already have brains. How else could you have figured out how to put yourself and the Tin Man back together? It was your idea how to pick the lock on the cage, too. Hey, yeah. Well, I guess it was. See? You've had brains the whole time. And you, Tin Man, you've shown you have a heart. You freed all the animals in the zoo. Well, they looked unhappy. I wanted to help. That's heart. And Lion, you showed bravery when you stormed the witch's castle. And you certainly seemed brave a moment ago when you were roaring at me. Oh yeah, sorry about that. No worries. But don't you guys see? You've had what you were looking for the whole time. But what about Dorothy? Hmm, Dorothy. Let's see what we can do. Hey, what about the magic shoes? Dorothy, can you use them to get home? Magic shoes? You've got the sapphire slippers? That makes you the most powerful person in Oz. Do you know how to use them? Mm, nope, no idea. I'll bet the good witch knows. Scarecrow, you're really on a roll here with all the brain stuff. That's a great idea. So the wizard sent out a call to the good witch of the north. Yay, magic to the rescue. Dorothy, my dear, how are you? I'm so glad you made it to the Emerald City to see the great and powerful wizard. Yeah, about that. We'll chat later, but now we need to get this girl home to Kansas. And we were thinking... Well, I was thinking, I do that now. Yes, the Scarecrow was thinking you would know how to use the magic of the Sapphire Slippers to get home. So do you? Oh yes, it's quite simple. Take three steps in the Sapphire Shoes and say your wish. And then I'll be home. And then you'll be home. What? It's that easy? <laughs> Wait! You have to say goodbye first! Oh, right. I almost forgot that I would never see you again. Oh, well. <laughs> Don't! You'll rust! Tin Man, I'll never forget how kind you are. You have a wonderful heart. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy! <laughs> Someone better get his oil can. Lion, you're braver and fiercer than any Kalita in the whole land of Oz. Thank you for protecting us on our journey. Oh shucks, Dorothy. I'll miss ya. I'll even miss your terrifying dog, Toto. Be nice, Toto. <laughs> Scarecrow, you've been with me the longest. I don't think we would have made it without your quick thinking. I think you're the real wizard here. Aw, oh, Dorothy. Do you have to go? I do. I miss my family and my house and... Hey, wait a sec. My house is in Munchkinland. Huh. I wonder where Auntie M and Uncle Henry live now. Well, I better go. I love you guys, and I'll miss you. Come on, Toto. We'll miss you. We love you. Bye, Dorothy. Dorothy took three steps and said, take me home to Kansas. And in a flash, Dorothy and Toto were back in Kansas. It was more colorful than she had remembered, but maybe that's just because Dorothy was so happy to be home. Hi kids, Miss Booksy here with a Cool School exclusive. Today, I'm going to interview a real witch. <laughs> Super scary, huh? I mean, witches are always flying around on broomsticks and casting spells and being wicked, right? <laughs> well, we'll see. Help me welcome to the stage, the one, the only. Oh, I realized I don't know her real name, so come on out, witch! Hey, how are you? Happy to be here. Hi there, so what is your name? Alfred Boogers. Wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> so tell me, how did you first become a witch? Were you born a witch? Did you go to a school for wizards and witchcraft? Ooh, do you play Quidditch? I was born into a family of witches. My mother was a witch, my mother's mother was a witch, and my mother's mother's mother was a witch. What about your mother's 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 mother? Was she a witch? No, she was an accountant. Oh, <laughs> so what was your first spell? I turned the family cat into a chihuahua. What? I'm a dog person. Interesting. I always thought witches like cats. That's just a stereotype. Anyway, my spells got really good when I got my first bubbling cauldron. Ooh, tell me about that. What was the first thing you cooked up in your cauldron? First thing was chili. I make excellent chili, award-winning. Spicy but not too spicy, light on the beans. Oh, okay, but what kind of spells did you first cook up? Oh, right. Let's see. Uh, one time I put in the hair of a yeti, the fingernail of a meerkat, one lizard's tongue, a dash of cinnamon, and the eye of a newt. 
And what did that do? Made my entire kindergarten class levitate. You kids get back down here this minute or I'm calling the principal. That sounds fun. Want me to levitate you? Are you serious? Um, yes please. <laughs> do you have a bubbling cauldron? I have a crock pot. Eh, it's okay. I can just use my wand. Abracadabra. Oh, this is so cool. <laughs> oh, hey, you have some schmutz on your hat. Oh, thanks. Hey, how do I get down? Hocus pocus. Ow. Whew. Sorry about that. The landing is the hottest part. <laughs> so most people think of witches as wicked villains, but you actually weren't the bad guy in Snow White. Yeah, the evil queen was the villain there. I mean, her name is Evil Queen. What do you expect? Have you ever done anything truly wicked? Hmm. One time I cut the line at Disney World. For which ride? It was the line for the Bippity Boppity Boutique. Ooh, that is wicked. But I was such a cute princess. Fair enough. Everyone deserves a princess moment. Exactly. Just one more question before you go. Is it annoying when people dress up as witches for Halloween? Not at all. I love it. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, you know. Plus, I blend right in and go trick-or-treating. Witches love candy, by the way. You can quote me on that. What a great story. Thanks for coming to Storytime. See you next time. Bye. I feel weird. Pan, you gotta do something. She needs her fairy glitter. Otherwise, she gets really weak. What are we gonna do? Well, there's one thing. If everybody claps, then we'll show her that people still believe in fairies. Of course we believe in fairies. And all of you out there, if you believe in fairies all together, I need you to clap your hands. Please. Please, for my bestie, clap your hands so Tink can hear you. Hi, I'm Pam. Peter Pan, I have so much cool stuff to show you guys, but first I want to tell you about a very special family, the Darling family. And there was a huge battle. You'll never catch me. Oh yeah, watch me. And Peter Pan was so quick, flying through the air like a little white bird. Yep, they're talking about me. Every night, Mrs. Darling tells bedtime stories about me and all my buddies. And my favorite thing to do is listen outside the window. Soaring through the air with Tinkerbell. I love this part. They race to the pirate ship in the middle of the sea. Come on, Tink. Those pirates won't get away with this. I got your back, buddy. Hey, I have a great idea. Yeah? How about in this story, I get to be Tinkerbell? Ooh. Please, I've always wanted to be a fairy with wings. I love it. Yes, this is awesome. And these wings are more glittery than I imagined. Huh, Tink, what'd you say? Uh, <laughs> nothing. Land ho! What, Tink, you're being so weird. Um, look. Whoa, yeah, there they are, quick. Hey, you stinky old pirates. Oh man, not this kid again. Put your dukes up, Starkey. Ah, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. What's all this fuss about? You know what, Zoro? I think you're so brave. Who, me? Yes, brave enough to play a pirate. Yeah, totally. I can do this! A pirate! Arr. Um, okay. Where's your leader? You mean Captain Hook? Arr. And then... I, I want to fly, fly like Peter, Peter Pan. Pan! Hey, Mom! I can fly! Watch me! <laughs> Ouch. Is it weird I like to listen to stories about myself? All right, all right, kids. I think it's about time for bed. Nana! <laughs> yep, their babysitter is a dog. I'm telling you, the craziness is only getting started. Sure. And she speaks. <laughs> hmm, that's weird. I could have sworn I heard something out there. Whew. <sighs> They're all set for bed, Mrs. Darling. 
I've looked high and low for my phone, you guys. Um, I don't have it. My gold? Sorry, Dad. It was our buried treasure. Oh? Huh? You know, like in the story of Peter Pan. Peter Pan? Oh, Dad, Peter Pan? Oh, that silly kid. Hey, rude. All right, everyone to bed. Especially you, Wendy. You have a big math test tomorrow. Ugh, growing up is hard. Don't do it. Don't grow up. We, we won't. Night-night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mom. You closed the window? Uh, yeah. It's freezing. But Peter Pan <sighs> might come to the window. Huh? To visit. <laughs> oh, Wendy, dear. Peter Pan is just a story. Peter is not real. Ha! That's what she thinks. But one night, I was listening to stories, minding my own beeswax. The kids were doing their bedtime routine. So one night, the kids were doing their bedtime routine. Story, bath, brush your teeth, bed. You know, the huge. Me and my shadow were chilling outside. Oh, BT Dubs, that's my shadow. She comes with me everywhere I go. Right, Shadow? <laughs> what, what is that smell? <laughs> Smells like cinnamon buns? John, ew! Oh, I was saving that for later. <laughs> OMG, that's so gross. Is it me? I, I swear I showered. Ooh, not sure. Yesterday? No. Yes, today? No, it was definitely yesterday. It smells like Girl Scout cookies. A possible intruder. But Nana, I'm telling you, there's nothing out. Peter Pan? Pan? <laughs> gotcha. I can't believe it. You're real. I'm sorry, Shadow. I gotta get out of here. I'll come back for you. Uh, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That was not good. What am I gonna- Gonna what? Uh, tank, don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry, boss. And I told you, you don't need to call me boss. Oh, sorry, boss. Um, boo thing. Ah, uh, Tank, I lost my shadow. The darlings totally trapped me and now they have it. What are they gonna do with it? Oh no! Well, we should go get it back. Yeah, you're right. But we gotta wait until they go to sleep. Meanwhile, back at the Darlings. I can't believe it! She's really real! I knew it! And her shadow detached from her body. Scientifically, that is a conundrum. Well, this is certainly more exciting than our regular bedtime routine. We should put her shadow in the drawer for safekeeping. I'll help. Oh, goodness! In you go! Operation Shadow Rescue on a dark, cold night! Little long-winded there, Pan. Right. Operation Shadow, underway. Gonna need a shovel. Really? A battery pack. Um... A grapple. What is that? This kayak. Seems a little excessive. Yeah, you're right. Okay, let's go get that shadow. Wait a minute, Miss Booksy. I thought there were going to be pirates in this story. Yes, the world. I just really like being a pirate. Don't worry, your special part is coming up. Okay, cool. Back to the story. Okay, I'm gonna crack open the door, and since you're tiny, you fly in and try to find my shadow. Awesome! P and T on three. One, two. Huh? Oh, huh. I was thinking we could start a team cheer. No time. Go. Hmm, no, nope, not under there. What about here? No. OMG, Peter, here! Oh, my shadow! Hey, I'm in here! Oh, I miss ah. you, you little cute hey. shadow, you! Ah. Hey! Ah. Oh, ah. oh my. Ah. What is going on? Glitter in this pouch, and I'm not afraid to use it. Peter, I knew you'd come back. Oh, um, hello.
Hello, my name is Pete. Uh, well, I guess you know my name since you just said it. <laughs> uh, I get nervous making new friends. Oh, Peter, let me help you with that. Gee, I, uh, I'm not used to having someone take care of me like this. Really? What about your mom? Her, well, I live in Neverland, and there are fairies and mermaids and pirates, but my parents work a lot, so I don't get to see them very much. Oh, that must be so hard. Yeah, but you seem like such a good mother. Well, I'm not exactly a mother. Oh, I have a great idea. What about being a Cub Scout mom? Are you kidding me? Sorry, I'm so confused. Well, in Neverland, I'm the Cub Master for a whole group of Cub Scouts. We'd love to have someone like you in our troop. So what do you say? Want to come to Neverland with me? So what do you say? Want to come to Neverland with me? Oh my, that's, that's, a, that's a big decision. What about my home and my brothers and my math test tomorrow? What's a math test? You know, addition, subtraction, multiplication, radical expression. Uh, the only radical expressions I know are like, yeah, serves up, bro, radical man, totally, dude. Look, Peter, I can't just leave my brothers. They can come with. Hey, little dudes, wake up, rise and shine. I'm awake. Mm. hi -ya. Whoa, you're ready for action, little guy. <laughs> what, what? What's happening? Is that you, Peter? Yep. So me and your big sis are headed to Neverland. You coming? Yes. Oh, I, uh, boys, I, I don't know. We should think about this. Miss Wendy, I promise I'll keep you guys safe. Let's just all go have an adventure together, and I'll get you back here in time for your muffin test. Math test. Whatever. Let's go. Um, Peter? Oh, I almost forgot. Just close your eyes and think of your favorite candy and your favorite song. La, la, la. Michael, shush. And fly. Um, Peter? Not now, Tink. I'm working over here. Peter! Tink, I swear I can't think when you keep saying my name. Peter! Um, right. Thanks, Tink. Fairy Glitter. Tinkerbell, hit him with your best shot. Sure, boss. Oh, my. I've always wanted to fly. From a physics standpoint, this seems impossible. But I like it. <laughs> you guys are doing great. Keep your spirits up and your eyes on me. Let's go to Neverland. And Tink, keep a steady stream of Fairy Glitter, too. You got it. As the new friends flew from their house through the sky to Neverland, they encountered some amazing things in the sky. Hey look, a flying metal tube. You mean an airplane? <laughs> okay, Wendy, nobody calls it that. Um, literally everyone calls it an airplane, Peter. Whatever, let's grab onto the wings and go for a ride. Whee! Uh oh. Oh boy. Maybe we should try something else. Everybody, jump! Whoa! I'm floating! You don't even need fairy glitter here. Ooh, is that the moon? My research indicates that the moon is made of cheese. Only one way to find out! Oh, Peter, you wouldn't! <laughs> Watch me. Mmm, tastes like chicken. Cheesy chicken. <laughs> Meanwhile, things on the pirate ship were getting a little wild. Okay, 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 you bunch of ragamuffins. Listen up. Or what? Ah, Starkey, I can't deal with you being snarky. Sit down. Uh, sorry, Smee. I'll clean that up right away. Listen, Captain Hook has had a really bad day. What else is new, Mr. Stinky Attitude Hook? Anyways, he lost his special glove that he wears over his hook to sword fight and, and other piratey things. Yar, I heard Hook crying all night long. Shh, Bob, don't say his name. We don't want to wake him up. He was taking his afternoon nap. Arr. 
Who dared utter my name? Uh-oh. Bill Jukes. Yes, sir. Was it me, sir? Get me my tablet. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, where is Pan? Last retractor. She was at Mermaid Lagoon. Do, do you think Pan stole your glove? Of course I think Peter Pan stole me glove. She's always up to mischief, that one. Urgh. Peter Pan's impossible to track. Do you want someone to walk the plank to make you feel better? Oh. Hmm. Bob. Oh, please, sir. Not again. Just kidding. Phew. Maybe tomorrow. Everyone was stunned by the beauty of the Mermaid Lagoon. Why, I've never seen anything quite like this before. I hear them singing. Watch that one over there. She's on the national flipping team. Wow, they swim so fast. You think that's fast? Watch this. Ah, oh, Peter. We missed you, Peter. Where have you been? Oh, I've just been out making new friends, wheeling and dealing. Silly girl. Whoa there! I can have lots of friends at once. Well, I know your BFF Tank should be around here somewhere. Tank? Tank? Hey, ladies. You're giving Peter a hard time. <coughs> yes. Well, we're just joking. Here, catch. Uh-huh. You mermaids ready for a rematch? Last time Peter and I kicked your booties in this game. Oh yeah, game on. Back at the ship, Captain Hook and the pirates came up with a scheme to find Pan. Arr, I say we go to the Green Peace Club. Yeah! And kidnap their leader, Tiger Lily. Yeah! She's friends with Pan. We'll use Tiger Lily to lure Peter Pan to us. <laughs> yeah! It was true. Peter Pan and Tiger Lily were really good friends. Tiger Lily was a park ranger and the leader of the Green Peace Club. They were a group of environmentalists, which pretty much means they lived off the land and tried to protect Mother Earth. There's Tiger Lily now. Who I just love squash. This butternut is going to be delightful. Hey, boss. Hey, Tiger Lily. We heard there's some new peeps afoot in Neverland. Cool. New friends. Well, we don't know that yet. Yeah, with your permission, we want to go check them out. Make sure they aren't a threat to the environment. Sure. But be back soon. I'll make you herbal tea. Okay. okay. Now, Smee, follow my lead. Okay, Captain. We're going to pretend to be farmers. Put on this hat. Why, Captain? Arr, no time to explain. Just follow me. Do da do da do. I love plants. La 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 la. And trees. Do da do. I love the sun. Um, excuse me, ma'am. Yes, farmer. I'm sorry. I don't think we've been acquainted. We haven't. What my colleague is trying to say is that we are new farmers here. Hmm. I usually know about all the activity here at Greenpeace Club. Uh, uh, uh. And what happened to your hand? Uh-oh. And why must you ask so many questions, girl? This is not gonna be good. I think you need to leave. I'm not leaving until you tell me where Pan is. Captain Hook, I knew it. Tell me where Pan is or you'll walk the plank. Let me go, I'm a pacifist, I don't like to fight. But while Tiger Lily was fighting for her life, the mermaids noticed the onlookers at their game. Hey look, invaders! Be gone, you strangers! Splash them! Hey, stop it! Girls, girls, quit it! We don't want any interlopers here. <coughs> we mean no harm. Everyone, stop! <laughs> This is your last chance, Tiger Lily. No way! It's Captain Hook! And Tiger Lily! Oh no! He must have captured her! We gotta save her! Okay, Wendy, you stay with the den. But I want to come with you, Peter. I can help! Okay, fine. Wendy, you come with me. Scouts, you take the darling boys back to the bunker. And mermaids, chill out. These are my friends. Tink, let's go.
So Peter Pan, Wendy, and Tink flew quick as a flash towards Captain Hook and Tiger Lily. I hope we make it in time. Almost there. This would be a lot easier if you would just tell me where Pan is. I'm a loyal friend and I won't give her to you. Aw, oh, come on. Sorry, BFF code of honor. Arr, it's very important that I find Pan. She has something of mine. Like what? Your sense of decency? A fly I would never hurt. But Pan? Ugh. Oh, Peter Pan, I'll squash him like a fly. You're so rough, dude. You have no idea. Who hurt your feelings so bad that you're this way, Hook? Well, it was this one time when I was little and... Hey, stop trying to understand me. I'm a mean pirate. That's that. I don't believe that. There must be a good guy under there. I'm not so sure. We all belong to this planet and Mother Earth is love. Stop it with this nonsense. I'm bad and you're whatever. And Pan is toast. Let's go. Peter, you have to do something. Tink, we got this. I promise, Tiger Lily, you're gonna love walking the plank. Not if I can help it. What? Who said that? Over here. Who? What? Where? Oh, Captain Hook! Huh? Look! Right over there! <laughs> you just got fairy glittered, man! What in the world? Um, Captain? Oh no you don't, you stinking pirate! You're not getting away that easily! I knew you'd come, Pan! Of course! BFF Code of Honor! Quick! <laughs> Well, my plan worked. All I wanted was to find you. Hey, well, what's happening? Fairy glitter. Come on, Peter. What is this, this witchcraft? Well, only enough magic in there to make you float for like five minutes. By then, we'll be long gone. <laughs> oh, thank the goddess. Sorry to leave you hanging. <laughs> Get it? Hanging, floating? Tink, come on. No time for jokes. Peace out, dudes! <laughs> Meanwhile, the scouts and darling boys had been on their way back to the bunker. Not too much longer, boys. Just a smidge more walking. My calculations tell me we should head due north. Have you had that compass this whole time? Why, yes. I never leave home without it. And my calculations tell me it's snack o'clock. Finally! Yeah, my belly is a-rumbling for some treats. Nibs, what do you got? Well, I have been so excited to have you guys taste test these candies. We love candy. I do say, this looks splendid. It's filled with chocolate and sprinkles and butterscotch and sour gummies and sugar snap peas and covered in powdered sugar. Sounds interesting. Tastes interesting. While we rest our weary bodies, we should play a game of charades. Yay! We'll, we'll go, go first. first. Three words. Um, Santa Claus? No. First word. Measuring out flour for a cake? No. Scooping sauce onto pasta? No. Squeezing glue to make slime? Come on, man. Isn't it obvious? No. no. We're, We're carving, carving a, a pumpkin. pumpkin. Oh. oh. Uh, I think I ate too much. My tum tum. Well, we should probably get back before it gets too dark. Yeah, let's go. One little problem. The members of the Green Peace Club were hot on their trail. Remember they were looking for the new people they heard about in Neverland? Well, let's just say the Darling Boys didn't make a great first impression. <gasps> Trash. You mean littering. We have to find who did this. And bring them to Tiger Lily. Man, oh man, she's not going to be happy about this. Earth vandalizers on our island? No bueno. Let's get them. So the members of the Green Peace Club were relentlessly looking for the Earth vandalizers, aka the scouts and darling boys who left trash behind in the woods. That's a big no-no. <laughs> Plastic? I can smell it. Yep, this way. <laughs> 
was a really fun game of charades. Yeah, but how could you not guess carving a pumpkin? So easy. Twas not. Was too. Sorry, twins. It was pretty tricky. Shh, quiet. Shh, did you hear that? I don't hear anything. Shh. What is it, John? Not sure yet. I hear rustling. It's probably just a deer. Or a pirate. What? what? Mm, no, those steps are heavier than a deer. But lighter than an elephant. There aren't elephants in the woods. It's Neverland. You want to bet? Shh, stop arguing before something bad. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> gotcha. What do what? Let us out of here. This is unacceptable. We come in kindness. Um, you literally trapped us. How is that kind? Well, we don't know what kind of vagrants are roaming this island. It's our mission to keep this a peaceful place and the land pure. This is all very harmonious, but can you let us out of here? We'll let you out, but you have to come with us. What? Why? Oh, JK, you scouts are good. We know you. Yay! Yay! But you boys need to come with us. Sorry, they violated the Neverland Environmental Law 26.2. Never ever litter in Neverland. Well, how do you know it was us? Come on, man. Uh, what? Who? Uh, me? Ugh, Michael. Well, we aren't leaving without our new friends. Yeah, you either take none of us or all of us. Uh, okay, fine. Everyone line up. Who? Oh. That didn't quite go how I thought it would. Wait, I have a better idea. We can run back to the bunker and get Peter. Yes, she'll know what to do. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, fine. Go ahead, take them. Yeah, we def won't be going to, uh, get help or anything. What? Don't worry, we have a plan. Okay, whatever. You two, let's go. John, this is very bad. Here's Wendy! You're coming with us to our headquarters. But what everyone didn't know was that Peter was on her way to the Greenpeace Club with Tiger Lily. Wait, so if the scouts are going to the bunker to find Peter, she won't even be there. Right, because Peter will be at the Greenpeace Club. And that's where the Darling Boys are headed right now. Yes, everyone is basically headed in the same direction at the same time. I wonder what will happen when they all end up at the Greenpeace Club together. John, I'm scared. I know, I am too. But I'm sure that Wendy and Peter will figure out a way to save us. Thanks for your help back there, Pan. Of course. <laughs> I just knew you'd come. You bet. We'll make sure you get back to the club safely. Come on, little dudes. You're moving too slow. Yeah, the seasons are going to change before we get there. Huh? Sorry. We all got to start running. Oh, man. Faster. Run faster. I'm running as fast as I can. Yeah, sorry. My legs are short. So basically everyone was running running towards each other. Almost there. I sure hope Michael and John are okay. Huh? Random time for you to be thinking about them. I just have this weird feeling. I miss Wendy. I know, me too. Come on, keep running. Just a little farther. Tink, why are you wasting your energy running? You can fly. I can fly? OMG, for a quick sec I forgot. We're flying now. I can fly. Yes! Sorry! Well, I'll be darned! How is this happening? We're flying? Wendy, is that you? John, do you know these guys? Boss, there you are! We were just coming to see you. Peter, save us! We've been trapped! What? But these guys are my friends! And you guys are my friends! And you guys are my friends! And I know you, and you, and you! Michael, are you okay? Everybody! Chill! Ouch! Ugh, my booty! Tink, why'd you do that? Because we all need to keep calm, carry on, talking. How poetic, Tink. I think she means we need to figure out what the heck is going on here. My thoughts exactly. 
So the groups all explained what the others were doing and how they were trying to arrive at the Green Peace Club at the same time. Tiger Lily even excused the Darling Boys for littering, since they were new to Neverland. They didn't know. But now we know, so we won't do it again. They realized they were all on the same side of things and enjoyed the Green Peace Club together. They drank some peppermint tea. Mmm, refreshing. I grew the peppermint leaves myself in my garden. They did some yoga. I feel so centered. Whoa. Oh. Oops. They watered some plants. This is an echinacea plant. Good to keep you healthy. Cool. And this is lemon balm. Reduces anxiety. Oh, that's good for me. I'm a little, some might say, high strung. Tiger Lily sang everyone a peaceful song. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. The bear went over the mountain. They took a nap under the shade of the trees. Ah, this is the life. Yeah, the sun is shining. Ah, and I'm sleepy. Ooh, not a care in the world. Ah! Wendy? Over here! Help! Wendy, what happened? I was climbing, and I was stretching, and I was parkouring. And you fell off? Yeah, I think I'm okay. I don't think it's broken. Ouchie! Oh, man, we gotta get you back to the bunker, and fast. You can take my wagon, and Wendy can ride in that. Thanks, Tiger Lily, but I got a better idea. Wendy, hop on. Oh, boy. Let's fly. Whee! Peter, don't drop me. Don't worry, I gotcha. Hey, looks like those stinking pirates are finally leaving the shore. See you later, alligators. Don't taunt them, Tank. Ah, uh, they can't hear us. Right, pirates? Huh? Did you guys hear that? No, dude, relax. You're always so worried. But... Yeah, just embrace the chill island life. But, but it sounded like a bird, or a plane, or a fairy. But the thing was, the pirates were not leaving the shore. That's right, kids. This wasn't the last time Peter and her buddies would see the pirates. <gasps> huh? So the gang was flying fast as lightning toward the home under the ground so they could save Wendy's life. Whoa, 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 that's so dramatic. It's just a busted leg. She'll be fine after the scouts take care of her. Who are you talking to, Peter? Uh, no one. According to my calculations, we are four hairs past a freckle away. Huh? Meaning, we're almost there. Good, because my back is starting to ache. Oh, sorry, Peter. Oh, not to worry. Anything for a friend. And meanwhile, the scouts were looking all over the home under the ground for Peter. Remember, they went back there to get help for the Darling Boys. Where could Pan be? We are really going to need her help if we are going to save the Darling Boys. Uh, guys? What if she never comes back? Hello, guys. Oh, man. We should start gathering our food and making rations. You guys, look. Hey, guys. Incoming. Oh, ow, my booty. Quick, guys. Wendy needs your help. Oh, no, Mother. You're hurt. We can help you, Mother. Right this way, Mother. We, we got, got you, Mother. Mother. Oh, oh, my. Thank you. Is she going to be OK? Will your medicine taste nasty, like the one our mommy gives us for a cough? Oh no, Michael, she won't even need any medicine. Yeah, we're gonna patch this leg up lickety split. I'll get a piece of wood and make a split. And I'll get ribbon to tie it tight. And I'll get a chocolate ice cream sundae. Won't that be a little messy? Oh, John, you silly goose, it's not for her leg, just a little snack. Right. The scouts made quick work of fixing up Wendy's leg. After some wrapping, stitching, welding, and ice cream eating, Wendy was as good as new. Wow, thanks guys, I feel like a million bucks. And bonus, I don't know if you scouts realize this, but because of this incident, you all earned your first aid and medicine merit badges. Yeah! Hey Wendy, I'll bet you can fly better than ever now. You think? I know. Tink, hit her with a little fairy glitter. You got it, dude. Ah, 
Tink? I... I swear I had another one in here. Another what? Tink, come on. We want to see Wendy fly. Uh, Pan, I think we have bigger fish to fry. My spare bag of glitter is... Is... is filled with glitter to keep this fun going? Uh... No! It's missing! What did you do this? Guys, it's true. I'm all out of fairy glitter. I'll bet that crooked Captain Hook stole it when we were busy saving Tiger Lily. You're right. Tink, what's wrong? It's her powers and her energy. She's getting weaker by the second. I feel weird. Pan, you gotta do something. She needs her fairy glitter. Otherwise, she gets really weak. What are we gonna do? Well, there's one thing. If everybody claps, then we'll show her that people still believe in fairies. Of course we believe in fairies. Well, sometimes people lose their faith and Tink needs a little encouragement. Quick, Pan, I'm fading. And all of you out there, if you believe in fairies all together, I need you to clap your hands. Please. Please, for my bestie, clap your hands so Tink can hear you. Sorry to interrupt this really important moment, but I just needed to tell you Captain Hook did steal Tinkerbell's fairy glitter. Yup, I stole right from under her nose. Urgh. Captain, that's aggressive. Well, you gotta be aggressive if you want to get your way. I guess. And I want my special glove back from Pan. And I knew if I took that fairy's magical pouch of glitter, Pan would surely come back for it. Peter Pan certainly does seem to be a loyal friend. She's kind of always saving her friends. Ha-ha! I'll use that loyalty to trap her. Oh, boy. Come on, you guys. Clap! Clap! Please. Clap! Clap if you believe in fairies! I believe in you, Tink. I believe in magic. See, Tink? Everybody loves you. We believe in fairies. Do you believe in magic? Tell me you believe. I believe. I'm feeling stronger and stronger. Clap a little bit more. I'm back, people. Thank you. See, people still do believe in magic. Magic is all around us. I love it. But this won't last long. We really got to get to Hook's ship to get my glitter. We'll stay in the bunker in case Hook shows up here. We'll come with you, Pan. I'm ready to fight for your honor, Tink. <laughs> this better work, because this is my last handful of fairy glitter. Let's go! Good luck! The group flew fast as lightning toward the pirate ship. You need to prepare yourself for battle, peeps. Yeah, those pirates are strong, but we're stronger! We can do this. Aha, see that? They're still by the shore. We gotta make a sneak attack. We'll follow your lead, Pan. Okay, shh, we gotta do this very quietly. Look, I see Smee and Bob and the others. What, what are they doing? Are they, is that nail polish? Spa day. Ah, soft as a rabbit's booty. I love that mint green color. It brings out my eyes. Hold still. I'm trying to clip these toenails. Gross. When is the last time you did this? Nasty. Count us in, Peter. Okay, here we go. We pounce on three. Like on three or after you say three? On my count of three. So when you say three? <sighs> ah, here we go. One, two, three. What's happening? Put up your dupe, Smee. Uh-oh. This is not gonna be good. We won't hurt you if you take us to your leader. Oh, the little fairy is scary. You have no idea. I may look tiny, but I'm mighty. I believe you. Just don't hurt me. Dude, you guys are pirates. Aren't you supposed to be a little bit more, like, bloodthirsty or something? Now might not be a good time to say this, but I really don't like being mean. Ugh, where is my bag of fairy glitter? Ha ha ha, 
I knew this bag of dumb old glitter would lure you back to my ship. Peter Pan can never turn down a chance to help a friend. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Ugh, he used my kind heart against me. Burst. Pan, give us the word. Charge! Suddenly, Pan and Hook were cornered face to face. Give us back the fairy glitter. Never! You, you codfish! Then give me back my glove! Huh? My special glove. The one my grandma made me when I was a little boy to protect my hook and do piratey things. Whoa, this got heavy. Um, this glove? Are you kidding me? Sorry, boss. I didn't know this was the glove you were looking for. I've been using it to hold all the fish I catch. Oh, I'll never get that stench out of my glove. Bob! Do you want him to walk the plank, sir? Yes! Plank! 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 plank. plank. Oh, man! Oh, man! Here goes nothing! Huh? What? I wasn't gonna let one of me men drown. Just teaching him a little lesson. Let's all go! So, uh, Hook, the fairy glitter? I already snuck it back into Tink's pouch. Huh? Aw, oh, thanks! You know, this has been a lot of fun, but I kind of feel like it's time to go home. Sure, we can head back to the home under the ground. No, Peter. I mean our home, not in Neverland, where our parents are, and Nanny, our own beds. Oh, um, I thought we had more time together. Like, I kind of thought forever. Well, we def can be friends forever. I miss my mommy, too. Would you mind taking us back, Peter? Sure, yeah. That's what friends are for, right? Second star to the right. And straight on till morning. Tell the scouts thank you for everything. And Tiger Lily and the Greenpeace Club to keep on protecting the land. And tell the mermaids we'll come play bubble ball with them soon. This was a great adventure. I'll miss you, darlings. I really don't like goodbyes, so how about see you later? See, See you, you later. later. Until next time, off to Neverland. Good night, boys. Good, Good night, night, Wendy. Wendy. <laughs> Good morning, my darling darlings. Wendy, are you ready for your math test today? Huh? Wasn't that like months ago? Silly Wendy, of course not. We were just talking about it last night. But haven't we been in Neverland for so long? I'm not quite sure, but something magical definitely happened. The best parts of being a fairy. The first cool thing about being a fairy? Yeah. Hiding in small places. Remember when I got stuck in that drawer? <laughs> that was crazy, but it was okay, because us fairies are tiny, so we can squeeze and fit in the most random of spots. Try me. How about a clamshell? Easy. See? Hmm, can you fit inside a water bubble? Easy breezy. Oops, sorry. That's okay. Next cool thing about fairies, we actually don't mind the dark. Ready, Zoro? Uh-oh. Where are we? Well, this is why fairies don't mind the dark. Our glitter wings are like a flashlight. Cool. Okay, while we're here in the woods, I want to tell you about the next cool thing about being a fairy. Is it this? Huh? Where did you even find that little guy? Let him go. Oops. Sorry. 
No, 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 Zorro. But that is actually kind of close. Us fairies use nature to make music. Like sticks and rocks and leaves? Yep. Watch this. Wow. I never knew fairies were so resourceful. Oh, yeah. Resourceful is my middle name. It is? No, it's Agatha, but still. So, is there one more thing you got up your sleeve? You mean other than fairy glitter? Oh, boy. Here we go again. Oh, yes. Here we do go again, because this is the final thing on my awesome list of cool things about being a fairy. Scaring your friends? No, dude. Flying. Right. That's pretty much what us fairies are most known for. Flying. Come on, Zorro. Give it your best shot. <sighs> okay. Whoa. This is fun. Told ya. I feel like an honorary fairy. You totally are, Zorro. Well, I hope you had fun learning more about fairies and... Did you guys like learning about fairies? Yeah! Cool! <laughs>